Hello and welcome to the Online Academy of Irish Music. Um, my name is Killian O'Dolig and I'm going to be teaching you tricks and tips how to accompany Irish traditional music in standard tuning. Um, so the first tune we're going to start off today with is the Rose and the Heather. Um, it's in the key of D and myself and Kirsten are just going to play it first and then we'll break it down afterwards. <laughs> Okay, so you've just heard myself and Kirsten playing the tune um, and I'm, what we're going to do now is we're going to break it nicely down and I'm going to take you through exactly what I just played um, and encourage you to, to play along with me. So we'll start right at the start and we'll start on the very first A part. Before we do, I'll just emphasize my perspective on um, accompanying Irish music. Essentially, what you want to be doing is you want to be colouring in from the background. You don't want to take the foreground because the the melody instrument still still holds the story um, and you're kind of just filling in the, the backdrop essentially so you want to give it color but you don't want to dominate you want to like you do, you're trying to elevate the melody player you know so generally when a melody player will start playing a tune they'll often play quite lightly at the start just to to find their feet and let them let the tune kind of take its own way so you don't want to you don't want to overpower that either so you will start quite lightly yourself so what i started with there was the tune is in the key of d um, so we're playing in D, and you might be familiar with a D chord down here. What we're playing up here is is a D chord as well, but it's an inversion of a D chord, which means that it's 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 the the, the notes have all been shifted up one stage. It's basically just an, a different way of playing D, and it's what we call it is a different voice. It's a different voicing on the chord. So it just sounds a little nicer. And voicings are a very good thing to play around with when you're accompanying because you don't you don't want to just play one chord the same way all the time. By playing it in different voices, you can you can give it a whole different texture, a whole different feeling, you know, and texture is what we're aiming for here. So we're starting on this D chord. I've got my first finger here, my second finger here, and my third finger here. And you're, again, you're strumming the same four as you would in a normal D chord. And what we're doing is by switching around from here to here, that's essentially like playing D and G. So it's, it's, it's a nice effective measure. It's nice and light of a chord change without overpowering the melody all too much so you're and then we can bring it down to your a chord just here which again is a very small change it's not too overpowering on the melody still but it's just like that which you might be familiar with just down here so to play it's just it's just dga but it's just with a different voicing i said and it just it's, it's a little bit more effective because it's a bit lighter and it's up at the top you know so what I played in the A part, I'll just play it for you slowly so you can play along. Okay, so you can see here, I started on the D, then I just put my pinky on the B string to bring it up to the G, back to the D, and then we're switching down to, from here to here. It's almost, it's pretty much an A chord, it's got a D in the, in the middle of it there, but if you want to reinforce that A chord towards the end of the part, it's always good to start out here and then put your third finger on here, and it really fills up that chord just to kind of emphasize the, the fact that the part of the chord, that this part of the tune is coming to the end. Um, so that's the A part covered nice and lightly. 
In the B part, there's going to be a dynamic rise because melodies in B parts generally seem to rise anyway. So the best thing for you to do here is to start out the B part nice and lightly, almost to trick the ear into thinking that we're still in a, in a nice mellow B part. But within a bar or two, the melody will actually rise and go much higher. So you want to emphasize that with a, with a change in your own dynamic as well. Um, so what we do is we start out with playing just a D chord as we did before and then hit the G chord, the full G down below, hit it good and hard, so we're going and so what that was is just a G down from, a run down from G, F sharp, E minor and A and then you go back up to your nice quiet D chord again and you can hit the A chord Okay, so we're playing with dynamics there. We're starting quite low and then we're going to rise up good and high, come back down low again for the middle and rise up good and high for the end again. So I'll play that for you, let you hear it. This way then at the end of that B part you're set up nicely for the next A part which is going to be it's going to be pushing a little bit harder because now the tune has established itself and the melody player is feeling comfortable in playing the tune so at this point we can kind of empower the tune a little bit more with some with some stronger rhythms so what I'm going to use in this case is a similar voicing of the chord except we're going to give it an extra finger here on the A string so as to make two D sounds come out so you've got a very resonant D which is very important because it kind of gives the tune a constant reminder of what key it's in, in a sense, so that the ear, the listener's ear, knows knows what, what to listen for, you know. For all of these chords that I'm doing, refer to the chord charts to be found on the website as well, um, and you can see exactly what I'm playing here in case you're having trouble keeping up. So we're starting this chord, we're starting this part on the heavy D chord, and basically the different shapes that we're going to be using in this sequence of chords is just... This is another version of D, then we go slide that whole shape up to make it similar to an E minor. We can slide it up two more frets to make it an F sharp minor. Um, you can slide it up one more fret and you fill in your pinky just here to make it a G. And then at the top you slide it up two more and you've got your A chord. Now the one thing that all of these chords have in common is that there is a D string ringing out the whole time so it's a very resonant reminder as I said before of what key you're playing and so I'll just show you what I played in the second B part of the tune This, the, these general structures are is that they're they're quite open they're quite loose you don't need to stay you don't need to stay put with a certain structure of the chords because you've got your D string ringing out through there sometimes the chord won't perfectly match up with the melody but the melody will move so quickly within its notes that you don't really need to worry you know as, if it sounds good for the overall structure overall structure of the tune then you can you know you can you can pop it, you can a sl slight discord will will add a little extra color to it um, so yeah you've established some good rhythm on this A part. So as we're coming back into the B part again, feel free to keep rising her up. So we're going to start on the D chord, but in the same place where we went heavy on that G, we're going to do the same thing again. So we can empower that melody once again. So we're going. 